Hello, tea friends. Yi cha hui yo. Through tea, make friends. Welcome back to our brewing tea series where we discuss all things tea from processing and history to, of course, preparation, all with the aims of improving your tea practice at home and growing our tea here at the hut as well. Get engaged, get involved in the comments, ask questions, discuss the topics, and let's all grow our tea practice together. This week, we're gonna explore leaves in a bowl tea ceremony, which is the first ceremony in our tradition. We'll go through the form together, but don't feel like you have to master this form in order to get started. Leaves in a bowl is the quintessence of simplicity. It breaks tea down into its natural elements, which is leaves, water, and heat, and that's it. The rest is just mind-made, the rest is man-made. That is what tea is in its essence, in its true form. So all you really need is a bowl, any kind of bowl will do, some hot water, any kind of hot water, and some leaves. And you put the leaves in the bowl and add hot water. It's really that simple. There is a form to the ceremony, and as you develop, you can practice that form and grow in skill, but don't feel like you need to pass a certain level in order to make this kind of tea. This kind of tea is easy, the entry level is easy, and so let's go through it together. If you already have a tea practice, so important to return to your foundation. Remember, advanced techniques are basic techniques mastered, so even if you've practiced tea for some years, it's always great to return to our foundation and make leaves in a bowl and build up our basic skills that we're gonna use in all of the tea preparation that we practice in this tradition. So, have a seat. Get out some bowls and let's make some leaves in a bowl tea. We start the ceremony with a bow. It's a bow to show respect to our guests. It's also a bow to excuse ourselves as we focus on the tea and take our attention away from our guests and honor them by creating the best tea possible. We turn the bowls as we take them out. Many things turn in the tea ceremony. This connects the ceremony and the moment to the cosmos all around us, to the turning of the earth, the turning of all the planetary bodies and stars and galaxies. All ceremony begins with purification, a purification of the self. So we wash all the teaware to symbolize washing ourselves, washing off our ego, our stories, our social status, our gender, all of that stuff. We wash the space, we clean the teaware so that the spirit of tea can come in. And we honor our guests. We purify that as well by washing the teaware in front of them. We could wash it before they come, but we wash it in front of them to show them respect to honor them. So in these ways we purify, we purify the space, we purify ourselves, we honor our guests and show them respect. This is the first skill in bowl tea, learning to wash the bowls. Don't feel like you have to master this in order to prepare tea, you can master it as you go. The off hand becomes like a bicycle fork. The off hand is stable and the strong hand turns the bowl, of course, towards ourselves so that we uh, are pouring the water we don't want towards ourselves. Bowl and its, and its ridge fits perfectly into our palm and then we make a Buddha palm and we shake it three times to get rid of the excess water. Washing the bowl like this is uh, very, very easy and you can, you can learn it. The most important thing is to remember the off hand doesn't move. It's stable, it stays still, it's like a bicycle fork, and it's only the strong hand that turns the bowl towards yourself. So keep the off hand secure and don't move it, and keep the other hand moving, and then you make a Buddha palm and shake it three times. In Leaves in a Bowl Tea, it's nice to have the tea on as part of the chashi, to have it out. It's, uh, symbolizes an offering that you're making. It keeps the chashi simple for this simple style of brewing. At this stage, it helps to fluff the leaves, to fluff them up a little bit so that the little bits fall to the bottom of the dish and you can grab just big leaves and put a little bit into each bowl.
As we pour, we want the leaves to spin. The spinning means that they go under the water and they steep all around as opposed to just floating up on the water. You're dragging them under the water so that they start to open all around instead of just sitting on top and very slowly opening. To do this, you pour at like a 45 degree angle against the side of the bowl, find the spot where they spin and then increase the, the pour. The first bowl we offer to our guests, we look at them, hold the bowl to our heart and offer it with a smile. This makes them comfortable with the silence that's going to ensue in the ceremony. Instead of a silence as a burden or something hard to go through or something uncomfortable, that just smiling on that first bowl as you hand it out is very powerful and helps create the space of joyful silence, makes people comfortable in silence in the ceremony. So it's very helpful to take the time to just connect to your guests only on the first bowl. Let them alone for all the subsequent bowls. But for that first bowl, connect with them, make eye contact, give them a bright smile and hand the bowl like that. And then they can go into the space of uh, going within and drinking the tea in silence. collect the bowls we always collect our own last so we bring in our guests bowls it's good to keep your own bowl by the strong hand so you can keep track of whose bowls are whose and once again we want the leaves to spin because now they're stuck to the bottom of the bowl and they're oxidizing there so we want to lift them up off the bottom of the bowl and get them spinning around so they're once again flush in the water and opening beautifully and bringing flavor and aroma to the liquor as we pour. So once again, we're gonna pour uh, onto the side of the bowl, find the spot where they spin and then turn on the gas, make the stream pour out more fully so that the leaves can spin in a nice circle. As we hand the bowls out, we open our hand, we spin them. The polite reason for this is to offer the part of the bowl that our hand is not on to the guests so that they can drink from the part that our hand was not on. The deeper meaning is that this once again is a spinning that connects this moment to the cosmos, to all that's around us and to all the bowls of tea that have ever been so that we all are drinking from the same bowl all the way back to Shandong in that very first bowl, all the bowls of tea are connected. There's an old Chinese saying, every hour for tea since the beginning, since the first step, is a distillation of all the hours of tea that have ever been. So within every hour of tea is the spirit of all the hours of tea. You can collect the bowls as often as you want, gather them, make as many steepings as you want, do at least three, but you could do a lot more if you want, as long as the tea can last, keep going and going and going. But at some point, the ceremony has to conclude. A ceremony without a conclusion is not nice. And the best way to conclude a tea ceremony is with a cup or a bowl of water. In this case, you have leaves in the bowl. So after you collect the last round, after three rounds or five rounds or 10, you're gonna have to scoop the leaves out of the bowls. And since you've stuck your hand in them to get the leaves out, you're gonna have to wash them once more. So we take the bowls and scoop the leaves out into our gen shui and then we're gonna fill them with water and rinse them one more time. This is a chance for you to once again uh, pay attention to how we rinse the bowls. The offhand is a fork and doesn't move, and the strong hand twirls the bowl towards ourselves and then makes a Buddha palm and shakes out the remaining water. So keep the fork not moving, turn the towards ourselves, Buddha palm, shake it out. And 
Let me serve a bowl of water. True friendship between ladies and gentlemen is like clear spring water. It leaves no trace. That's a famous Chinese saying. The water signifies the end of the ceremony. There's nothing that needs to be said. When you take the leaves out like that and add water, everybody will know the ceremony is complete. There's no need to say that it's complete. And completion is important. It, it closes the circle. It closes the ceremonial space. And then we end once again with a bow, wishing our guests well on their journey. May this ceremony uplift them and walk with them throughout their day. As promised, I'm gonna leave you with a little homework each time at the end of these videos. For this time, of course, we're gonna practice leaves in a bowl ceremony, practice all the details we discussed, like washing the bowl or making the leaves spin, and all the little details that you may have noticed that were said or unsaid. It's a great way to return to the foundation if you're a little bit further along in your tea journey or to start your tea practice here. Remember, in tea, we always practice one to 10 and 10 to one, same in Zen. We build up and then we go back to the foundation and then we build up and then we go back to the foundation. So this is a return to the foundation or a building of the foundation. So it's incredibly important, this ceremony, and from it, we can move into all kinds of other tea preparation. So we always start here. Of course, let's make some comments below, some questions, some dialogue, just like we did in the last few videos. We promise to answer and let's discuss and grow in this beautiful tea practice together. To support these videos, please go to globalteahut.org and if you haven't, subscribe to our magazine. You'll get a 60-page advertisement-free magazine every month that covers everything about tea, from processing and history to folklore to ethnography to teaware to, of course, tea preparation. It's a beautiful way to further your tea education. And of course, you can't learn about tea just by reading, so it comes every month with su sustainably produced teas that you can drink with people around the world. You also get access to our app, so you can connect with members in 60 countries around the world, create your own tea sessions, visit other people, and have tea sessions at their place, and let's grow this beautiful community together. All of the proceeds then support our free center here in Taiwan where people come from around the world to take 10-day courses and immerse themselves in a life of tea and develop their tea practice. These 10-day courses are completely free. We welcome you to join one at tsejut.org. So until next time, enjoy some beautiful tea. In our tradition, we have five basics of all tea brewing, and they are the foundation beneath all the bowl teas, gong fu tea, and whisk tea. So they form the pillars on which we found our tea practice. Join us next time on Brewing Tea as we explore the five basics of tea brewing.